Welcome back to Discrete Mathematics. To continue our discussion of generating functions, we are going to talk about integer partitions. Now, I asked the question here, how many partitions are there for the number 4? So I'm going to use this example to explain what a partition is. Okay, we can write the number 4 as just the number 4. Or we could write it as 3 plus 1. Okay, so when we deal with partitions, I'm going to tell you that 3 plus 1 is the same thing as 1 plus 3, so we only count it once. Order does not matter in partitions. So we can also write 4 as 2 plus 2. We can write it as 2 plus 1 plus 1, or we can write it as 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So we can say that the number of partitions of 4, we'll just call P4, is equal to to 5. So this can be exhaustive if I say what is p of 26 uh, because there's a ton of options. So instead we're going to work with generating functions. Now how do we figure out what the generating function for this is? Well, we take a look at how many 1's there are, how many 2's there are, 3's, and so on. So if we take zero ones, we just get x to the zero, which is one. If we take one one, we get x to the one. If we take two ones, we get x squared. And of course, this is just your one over one minus x generating function. How many twos? Well, if we select zero twos, we get one. If we select one two, we get x squared because we want essentially these coefficients or these exponents to add up to whatever number we're looking at. So if we select two twos, we get x to the four plus dot dot dot. So this is just the same as one over one minus x squared. How many threes? Well, same logic. If we pick one three, we get x cubed. If we pick two threes, we get x six, so on. So this is just one over one minus x cubed. And clearly, this is just going to go on for forever. So when we say how many n's are there, well, that's just going to be 1 over 1 minus x to the n. So that's how we take a look at partitions. So in general, if we want the number of partitions for n, this is going to be the generating function for the number of 1's times the generating function for the number of 2's then the threes, then the fours, all the way up until however high we want to go. So what this really is is 1 over 1 minus x times 1 over 1 minus x squared times 1 over 1 minus x cubed, and that goes on for 1 over 1 minus x to the n, and then it keeps going. So we have a nicer notation for this, and if you remember the sigma notation, we can say that i is greater than 0 of x to the i times ai, which is just a formal power series. Well, we have a new symbol for multiplication instead of addition, because sigma is the sum, pi is the product. So we say i is equal to 0 to infinity. In fact, I can just say i is greater than or equal to 0. In fact, it really should be i is equal or greater to 1, in this case, of 1 over 1 minus x to the i. So that's 1 over 1 minus x to the 1 times 1 over 1 minus x squared times 1 over 1 minus x cubed, so on. So that product is equal to this notation. It's just a nicer way of writing things out. So that's the generating function for partitions of n. And of course, the value you're looking at is going to be the nth coefficient. So we know that the fourth coefficient of the generating function for i equals 1 to, it would be 4 of 1 over 1 minus x to the i, is just going to be 5. We wouldn't expect you to actually find this because this is not an easy thing to compute. So 
It's more like saying, what is the generating function? Don't worry about the coefficient because a computer can find it for you. So now that we've done that, let's take a look at another cool thing we can do with it. Before we've had x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to n, and we know that's just 3 plus n minus 1 choose n, but what happens when we put coefficients in front of those? So instead I say, oh, what about ax1 plus bx2 plus cx3 is equal to n? Well, that gets trickier, so we just use generating functions. Okay, so in this case, a, b, and c all are greater or equal to zero, so um, I should probably write that down. a, b, c are going to be greater or equal to zero for this example. And what we want is we want the nth coefficient of some generating function. And we don't really know what it is yet, so let's figure it out. Well, a, let's pick a number for a. So 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. It can really be anything because it's just a. But what about 2 times b? Well, b is just like a, except whatever you pick is multiplied by 2, which means if we pick x0, it's just going to be x0. But if we pick x1, it can't be x1. It has to be x2, so x squared. Then we have x to the 4 plus x to the 6th, so on and so forth. So this is our a, this is our b. And now, what do you think we do for 4c? Well, for 4c, again, if we pick x0, we just get x0 back when we multiply it by 4. But if we pick one object, we're actually picking 4, so we get x to the 4. If we pick two objects, because we're multiplying by 4, we get 8, so we get x to the 8. And that just goes on forever. So we want the nth coefficient of a times b times c. And of course we can shorten this to 1 over 1 minus x. So this is x to the n of 1 over 1 minus x. Of course this is the a's. 1 over 1 minus x squared for the b's. And 1 over 1 minus x to the 4 for the c's. Clearly you can see here that the coefficients match up with the coefficient of the a's, the b's, and the c's. So if we have, say, what if I just said, hey, let's, let's, pick a, let's pick a nice new example here. I want 18a plus 35b equal to 96. Okay, this is the same thing as saying I want the 96th coefficient of 1 over 1 minus x to the 18 times 1 over 1 minus x to the 35. So when you understand the process of how we get to the generating function, it's very simple to take a look at one of these problems and say, okay, I know the generating function for this. But we can also throw some curveballs at you. So here, b has to be greater than or equal to 2, and c has to be greater than or equal to 3. Of course, this also implies that a is greater or equal to 0. So let's do a. a is going to be the same as before because it's the same restrictions. So that's our a. Our b is going to be 1 plus x squared plus x4 plus x6 plus dot dot dot, just like before but we have the restriction that b has to be greater than or equal to 2. So we can't have the situations where we pick x to the 0, and we can't have the situation where we have x squared. So what we do is we start at x4. Why? Because we have to pick at least two objects, and 2 times 2 is 4, so our smallest that we can pick here is x to the 4. So what we write this is x to the 4 plus x to the 8 plus dot dot dot, and that's our b's. Our c's, well, c has to be greater than or equal to 3, so we can't pick one object, two objects, or zero objects. 
we have to pick at least three objects. So what is three times four? Because we have to pick at least three and whatever we pick is multiplied by four. So the smallest we can pick is X to the 12. And this should be in pink. So the smallest we can pick there is X to the 12. And then again, it just goes up by fours because we're dealing with four times the constant. So that's our C's. Now we can simplify this. So our A is one over one minus X. Our B, we can factor out X to the four. So we can shift it down to one plus X four plus X eight, so on. And that'll be over one minus X to the four. And sorry, you know what? This, this B should be X to the six because we're going up by twos here. So we can shift that to x4 over 1 minus x squared. And then our c's, we can factor out an x12. And we can get 1 minus x to the 4 on the denominator. And what we want is we want x to the n, the, or the nth coefficient. So, well, we can group up our x to the 4 and x to the 12, and we can do some shifting. So again, we remember this is x to the n minus 16 of 1 over 1 minus x times 1 over 1 minus x squared times 1 over 1 minus x to the 4. And if you don't know why this happened, well, we just grouped up x to the 4, x to the 12, and because when we multiply by a certain power of x, we just shift the generating function over, uh, we're just shifting it back. So that was explained in the previous video. There is one more thing we can do, and this was a problem in one of the textbooks that I use for this. So I figured, hey, this is somewhat difficult. Let's do it because I don't want a 10 minute video on something that is actually fairly challenging for exams. And this is one of the questions you see and you think, I understand integer partitions, but I have no idea where to start here. So I wanna show that the number of partitions of a positive integer where no summand appears more than twice is equal to the number of partitions where no summand is divisible by three. So first, this is none appear um, more than twice. So what that means is we can only have zero, one, or two ones. We can only have zero, one, or two twos, zero, one, or two threes. So for the ones, we get one plus x plus x squared, and that's the ones. Uh, the twos, we can get zero twos, one two, or two twos. So those are the twos. Uh, the threes are gonna be one plus x cubed plus x to the six, because we can get zero, one, or two threes, and this will continue. We can rewrite this as one minus x cubed over one minus x, if you remember the rules for generating functions, multiplied by one minus x to the six over one minus x squared. Our threes can be one minus x to the nine over one minus x cubed. And this will keep going. I did this just long enough to show you that this one minus x to the three will cancel with this denominator. And this chain is gonna continue down over and over and over again. So what we get is going to be, I'll write it right here. It's going to be one over one minus x times one over one minus x squared. The one minus x cubed over one minus x cubed will cancel out. So the next thing we get will be one minus x to the four times one minus x to the five, and that just keeps going. Now for the second part, we want none divisible by three. So what do we do here? Well, we wanna show the scenario where none are divisible by three. So that means that we pick ones, so we have one plus x plus x squared. We know our ones. Um, we know our twos, so our one plus x squared 
plus x to the 4, plus x to the 6. So those are the number of 2s. But for 3s, we only we don't want to pick any, because 3 is divisible by 3. So we just don't pick one. And then for the 4s, we have 1 plus x to the 4, plus x to the 8, so on. So we know that's the 4s. The 5s are the same way. So let's just figure out the generating function for that. Well, the 1s is just 1 over 1 minus x. The 2s is 1 over 1 minus x squared. The 3s, well, we don't have 3s, so we don't include it. The 4s is 1 over 1 minus x to the 4. If we did a 5, it'd be 1 over 1 minus x to the 5. And you can see here that these two are exactly the same. So that's something we can show with generating functions. Show that the number of partitions of a positive integer n where no summand appears more than twice is equal to the number of partitions where no summand is divisible by 3. So if we take a look, let's say we have 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 is equal to, what's that, 10? The number of ways to get to 10 with all these summons appearing at most twice is the same way as the number of ways where none of them are divisible by 3. So 5 plus 5 could be one of those. Kind of cool. So that was integer partitions. Compositions are different. I won't be covering those yet, but I will cover compositions. So that'll be later. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments here. You can go to trebtutor.com, check out some of the other videos, or you can go to the subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash trevtutor and discuss questions there. If this helps you out, feel free to share it with friends because they could use the knowledge too if they're struggling and this is free. So why not, right? Hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys next time.